Dan Drake. This is Front Up on Visitor Network TV. And we have with us today Margot Hartman, the president of the Nantucket Cottage Hospital, and Jim Kelly, chief operating officer of the Nantucket Cottage Hospital, uh, to talk a little bit about town meeting and more particularly to talk about what's coming in the days in the head. Um, you did pretty well at town meeting. You maybe didn't get everything you wanted, but you got the zoning change mm -hmm. for the hospital's main mm -hmm. property. Uh, what does that permit you to do from the way it was zoned before? Why was that necessary? It's very important. It's the necessary but not sufficient step for everything else that can happen uh, on, that, on that site. And what I will say, I'll turn it over to Jim, who was our COO and is now our vice president and project executive and really owned the, the process of, um, of our, our ability to be successful at town meeting. Uh, it, it was really heartening for 1,040 people to say to themselves, I know enough about this issue and I support it enough that I'm not going to call the article. So that was a, a real mm -hmm. uh, testament to the, the communications and the mm -hmm. transparency that we have worked so hard over the last mm -hmm. few months. What it does specifically is a, only a portion of the hospital parcel at 57 Prospect was in commercial neighborhood. So this for... I, you know, for, for some of us who become zoning junkies, uh, <laughs> the entire parcel now is a commercial neighborhood. The hospital also owns a, about 1.7 acres uh, at the back of the Gwynn Village property. There are mm -hmm. three parcels there. Um, that's across Vesper Lane. Across Vesper Lane and Gwynn Village. Uh, that's actually uh, was zoned residential uh, for the only purpose of it was uh, elderly housing. Mm -hmm. And there is no elderly housing in any of the three parcels there. So that also was uh, uh, made a change from R10 to, uh, to commercial neighborhood. So that got everything on the same, you know, in the same uh, zoning district. Mm -hmm. uh, but in order to have a hospital there, uh, zoning came in 1972. Uh, the current bylaw just says we'll have a hospital. It didn't define what the, what the uses were by right. Um, so we have, we created through the work of the planning board and the planning department, a hospital overlay district, which did many things, but it uh, was an overlay district over the 57 Prospect parcel and over the entire Gwynn Village parcel. Uh, what that does is give us a number of so 30 or 40 uses by right uh, within the uh, within both of those parcels. Um, it also uh, changed the uh, height uh, restriction or allowance mm -hmm. from. 30 feet to up to 50 feet. Our hospital's current site is about is between 46 and 50 feet now. Uh, but if we were to build a new hospital, when we build a new hospital, mm -hmm. we could only build 30. We needed to go up, um, and that's and 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 that's that's what really that's what um, mm -hmm. Article 70 accomplished for us. So it creates the the zoning capacity for us to have the flexibility we need to. Um, bring a new hospital to that site. Um, there was some confusion, I think, in the minds of the voters last night about the article about 47 Prospect Street. And, and who wanted what from what <laughs> and whom and uh, why it was there at all right, and right. so forth. And that one was turned down. That right. would have given the hospital uh, another acre and a half, I guess. It, mm -hmm. it gave the mm -hmm. selectmen the opportunity uh, to uh, transfer or lease or mm -hmm. allow the hospital to use you know, a portion up to five, 1.5 acres at the tip of Mill Hill mm -hmm. Park. Um, I think as Bruce Miller and uh, Rick said pretty eloquently that uh, the hospital had been searching for mm -hmm. a number of locations, uh, Wires Valley, uh, Mill Hill, the six acres of Mill Hill. And I think the Board of Selectmen were concerned that the hospital may have a use for that at some point in the future. It wasn't an article that we uh, sponsored. We weren't uh, we weren't using it for any of our planning purposes, uh, and it was really up to so the voters. So it was nice to, to have, but not. A, it was up to the voters to yeah. decide, and uh, and uh, but. Uh, you so, know, it's yeah. it's of course going to be tight on our site. Right. Well, that's I want to get into that. In we, a minute. we know that. <laughs> yeah, I want to get into that in a minute. Um, but, so, but right now, uh, there was one, just lastly, there was one other article. That affected you, right. which was 102 the and 103. We were part yeah. of the one of the. We were two of the 27 mm -hmm. paper roads parcels. Right. Uh, 
There are two. Yeah, basically on the, I guess it's the north and west yeah, side. North and west side yep. now, uh, dirt roads uh, mm -hmm. that are, one of them is access to two of our parking areas, mm -hmm. uh, which are pretty unimproved, would not be the nice way to say it, <laughs> potholes, sheets mm -hmm. of ice. Uh, Untastable, really. Mm -hmm. It's also one of the, it's the, the way for people to access the historic colored cemetery and the, um, and the uh, Mill Hill mm -hmm. Park, Park for one of the entrances, and so we're, we're now going to be able to incorporate those mm -hmm. and also improve those for improved access for everybody who uses that area. Good. Well, that's, that's yeah. a, a great start for yeah. where yeah. you're going yes. from here. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that our current site struggles with is we have, for example, if you look at w the emergency department side of the access to the building, we have pedestrians and delivery trucks and private cars and ambulances all using the same area. Mm -hmm. um, for safety, uh, one of the things we'll be looking at in designing the site is how can we maximize um, roads and uh, rights of way through the site so that we separate those things out. I think there, there are two key questions that people have. Uh, one of them is um, how long, what, you know, so what's your timeline now going out? And, and the best, uh, let me finish the other one. Yeah. <laughs> the, the second one is as we go through the process of building a new hospital, mm -hmm. are there services that are presently offered that aren't going to be available during the building process? Um, so, um, Take a shot. To the, to the second point, um, we've already begun to satellite some programs and services mm -hmm. because of mm -hmm. inadequate space on our current site. Uh, in July, we moved the physical therapy department, <coughs> changed the name mm -hmm. to Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Associates, and it's in the former Dan's Pharmacy space. It's a beautiful facility. Mm -hmm. Volume is up 25, 30% a month. Um, and in, uh, just a week ago, uh, we opened a satellite office for Di Dr. Heidi Larson in the former memory unit at Sherburn Commons. Um, and as we go through the phasing of the, uh, the, new pro uh, the new facility, we'll be looking at other uh, programs, administrative sort of offices mm -hmm. that may need to be uh, put in a satellite and may or may not return when the building's built. So it's a... It's a um it's a process that we've begun. We thought in potential those um, services might come back to a centralized mm -hmm. campus, but one of the things we'll be looking at is that more of a decentralized healthcare campus. But there won't be any services that won't be available somewhere. Absolutely not. No, there will not. During be. the transition yeah. we period. Have, we have no plans to, to decrease services. And, and Marla's even leading the effort to, we're constantly adding services. We mm -hmm. added. Uh, uh, we added a walk-in care program last uh, last year that's going to be expanded we'll be this expanding year. That. Uh, we had almost 1,600 visits in an eight-week period. That's something the community had asked for. And mm -hmm. The hospital responded, and so we're we're maximizing our current. Yeah. Sorry, no, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, we have a lot of new physician offices on site that are being developed. Right. I was just going to say. Yeah. We're, so we we took the old physical therapy space, and that's being reconstituted for Doctors Pearl and Larison. That will be open this summer, mm -hmm. which frees Doctor Pearl's current space, so we can grow more specialist care. And will the clinic still be in the office where uh, Doctor Larison the Anderson, was? The Anderson, Anderson building. building. Yes, yes. that will be yeah. the walk-in care clinic. So, right. you know. As we are continuing to grow and maximize the challenges of our existing building, we will be at the same time um, fine-tuning plans and programmatic phasing of a new building mm -hmm. um, on the site. Mm -hmm. And it has, obviously, we'll be very much engaged in local meetings and hearings and um, collaborating with uh, local groups such as the HDC and planning mm -hmm. in order to create the best hospital we can create for this island. Um, and then we will also have to go through a DPH, uh, a state level mm -hmm. um, regulatory review, including a determination of need um, application. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's some of those things can happen in parallel. Some of those things happen in sequence. Some of them impact each other. There's, of course, Does that all happen? I mean, the campaign. local ones do, but does the state happen before you start construction? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, abs absolutely. So you have so before you can put a shovel in the ground, we're talking what two years, under the best of circumstances, a yeah, year, a one year to and two, one to two years. Mm -hmm. uh, depend. I mean, we, um, you know, we have a lot of local input through the HDC and mm -hmm. the uh, planning board. We've committed that zoning is just a 
allows us to request site plan review and HDC review. And as we know, that's a real engaging process in our community. Mm -hmm. so. so realistically, we're talking everything going well, what, five years? Well, construction will probably be somewhere around 18 months. Mm -hmm. So um, somewhere to two years, so four to five so years, four to five years okay. you know, and that allows us to determine, you know, what is prudent to do mm -hmm. on our in our existing mm -hmm. building, um, as we continue to be, um, we're rebuilding the hospital from the inside out, mm -hmm. so that when we have a new building, it's the final expression of a, a really robust care delivery system. Our, our It'll just look a little different mm -hmm. than. Yeah than it does now. Mm -hmm. Our services have grown about 30% over the next over the last couple of years. By, we, by grown, by, do you mean by, by volume? volume, by volume. volume. Uh, we're one of the few, and I, I, I don't know of many hospitals that are actually seeing an increase in their inpatient census mm -hmm. uh, because more people are choosing to stay on island for a wider range of services. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's another so. way that we can support our primary care physicians yeah. by mm -hmm. offloading some of their other commitments mm -hmm. Um, through our hospitalist program, our new um, uh, emergency department physician group, and um, new cardiac uh, clinic. Yeah, we have, yes. yeah, Dr. My Tim friend, Weld opened Tim his Weld. clinic yes. this yes. last week. Yes. Yeah, we're excited for that. Yeah. And we have lots of other um, specialty um, offerings in the pipeline. Uh, we're just, we need to create the space so to do that. So, as with every place else, the real issue is going to be parking. <laughs> How are you going to deal with that? It's a re it is a real issue, yeah. and it's not a neutral issue mm -hmm. for people. I've really found that. Mm -hmm. um, and it has to do, everything that we're talking about has to do with recruitment and retention of staff. Mm -hmm. um, and um, being an accessible and welcoming place for patients. And that's a piece of it that we'll have to find ways to solve. Maybe unusual ways mm -hmm. for this island, we'll see. What about fundraising? Where are you on that? You know, what's been incredibly heartening is the fact that we have raised $55 million even in a time of uncertainty mm -hmm. as we've explored um, how best to be and where best to be. And um, I th we've had nothing but um, support and, and momentum from our existing donors and we look forward to um, connecting with them this mm -hmm. summer and bringing them up to date on what our plans are. Mm -hmm. um, and inviting new conversations um, to be part of this historic opportunity. Um, do you think that we um, lost anybody in terms of either because of the uncertainty or because they had their heart set on one of the other locations that was discussed? Or we have not heard that. I'll tell you what a lot of people have said, which is, you know, I have this earmarked for you, and when you put a shovel in the ground, that's when we'll start. Um, which is fine. Um, that's a, you know a perfect way to be in relationship and participate in this um, endeavor. Um, and I think um, uh, no one has called and said, you know, no, I'm out. What are what are we talking about now in terms of the, the ultimate price tag of this exercise? Or, or you know. Yeah. Once we know what we're going to build and how we're going to phase mm -hmm. it, phasing it by necessity on our existing site will be more expensive right. than building mm -hmm. all new at once and replacing. But um, we're looking at that now and, and we'll generate the total number of square feet. We're operating on the 75 to 80 million mm -hmm. framework, um, but you know, time has passed since That's we right. began envisioning that number and um, we will be refining it and we're all very interested. <laughs> is there a, a message that you'd like to get out to the community at this point in, in terms of, of uh, how they should look at the hospital and how they should use the hospital? And, and uh, I think thank you. Mm, absolutely, yeah. Thank you for um, you know, providing what we needed in order to go forward. Thank you for your feedback. Um, uh, it is all of our hospital. Um, sometimes I think th um, the challenges of some of the um, of some of the messaging. Um, I would love to invite people to be part of the solution. Are and you going to do that? I Are you going to have always. sort of a town meeting type of thing? Not yeah. town, maybe that's the wrong term, but uh, 
sessions, town sessions? You know, for people the have strong feelings about this hospital and mm -hmm. where it should be cited, mm -hmm. and that's important, and they're all part of a healthy relationship, um, I, hopefully I, I, in a creative way. I mean, we'll we have had um, community forums mm -hmm. um, over the last years, and we'll continue but to have But when you those. get into the sort of the functionality of yeah. the building and so forth, are you going to do yeah. the same kind of thing, or are you going yeah, to definitely. solicit oh, yeah. community input? Absolutely. Yeah. It starts to be the fun part when you can create a um, a three-dimensional mock patient room, for example, and invite um, community members through to give their input. You're saying this part up to now hasn't been the fun part? <laughs> 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 On that note. It's been fascinating. <laughs> On that note, thank you very much thank for you. being with us. Thanks Best of much. luck to you both, Marco Hartman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.